Welcome to Impact Moment right here on DC TV. I'm Alvin Jones. 48 years ago, the DC Rape Crisis Center was created. It was the first and only rape crisis center in Washington, DC, and the first in the world. Right now, as you know, with COVID and of course with things like Me Too, the need of a rape crisis center, a need for a place where a woman can go to feel safe, to address the issues is very important. And that is why we have right here with us right now an Impact Moment, Indira Hanard. She is the CEO of the DC Rape Crisis Center. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Great. Like you said, we are adjusting to the new climate absolutely as far as heat and world events yes america had a chance to see with the brett kavanaugh hearings mm -hmm. uh, what actually happens to women when they've been assaulted mm -hmm. physically mentally emotionally mm -hmm. um has that helped getting that information out. Has that helped the DC Rape Crisis Center? Yes, yeah, so I think ever since the start of the Me Too movement, mm -hmm. right, and definitely when Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, when she gave her brave testimony, what we saw as a result of that is that survivors of sexual violence were disclosing and have continued to disclose in record numbers. Um, our team was privileged enough to be on Capitol Hill during that time supporting survivors of sexual violence, and so, what happened was is that by survivors seeing Dr. Ford be able to stand in her truth and give her testimony, it gave them the courage to stand in their truth and give their testimony and give their testimony. And so we've seen an ongoing increase in requests for services. We've seen a 15% increase on our hotline. We've seen a 20% increase in individual and group counseling as a result. Now, before the Me Too movement, how mm -hmm. difficult was it for a woman who felt that she had been violated to, to stand up? Well, it's always been challenging to stand up and let someone know you've been sexually violated because of the stigma that is associated with that, because of the re-victimization that can occur. What the Me Too movement did was it served as a catalyst for beginning to have this national conversation, this national reckoning around sexual violence. What I've also noticed is that there were women who may have just put it under the rug, put it in the back of their mind. And when the Me Too movement came about, when you started seeing people talk about their experiences and this case with Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, is that these women got more in touch with the feelings that they had repressed. Mm -hmm. And did you find for some of them, it was good for them to step up into it and for some that it was became more painful to bring it back up. Yeah, so I think what we are clear about is that no survivor of sexual violence owes you their story. And for some, being able to speak your truth is healing. Mm -hmm. And for others, they just aren't there yet and they may never be there and that's okay. So what you're saying is, if a woman has had an experience, how she deals with it is her business and she has to make that choice of what she's most, most comfortable with. Absolutely. Each individual survivor is different, right? So there is no straight path to healing and there is no one monolithic way to heal and every survivor is going to do what is best for them. Hmm. So like, let me ask you this, in the last six months, what have you discovered that kind of made you go, wow, I, I didn't know this or now I get it or I didn't even know I didn't get it? So. You know, I think we are always learning from survivors of sexual violence because the healing journey is so different, right? The healing journey happens in a spiral format, right? So at one point, a survivor could be at ABC and the next point they could be at EF, so on and so forth. And so what we're clear about at the DC Rape Crisis Center is that survivors are the GPS in which we take our direction from. So we're always learning. We always want to know from them what is working, um, what they're needing, and how we can best, as a Rape Crisis Center, help facilitate their healing. So you're telling me that DC Rape Crisis Service Center is basically responding to their needs and not dictating what their needs should be. Absolutely. Yeah. Ab 
Absolutely, that is the most survivor-centered thing to do. What are some of the challenges that DC Rape Christ Center is experiencing right now and, and how can people help you with that challenge? Yeah, absolutely. So the COVID-19 pandemic has completely changed the way in which we execute our work. All of our services are happening virtually via telehealth. It's important to note that we are open, that we are continuing to serve survivors of sexual violence. Again, we have seen a significant increase in the requests for services. Um, our hotline calls have doubled. Our hotline calls have played an important thread in survivors of sexual violence. What we know is that the hotline is not just a crisis line, but it's also a lifeline. So the folks that are watching, how can they help you and your efforts? So I think, you know, folks, one, we want people to know we're open. Two, our hotline is 24-7. If folks are needing support, it's 202-333-RAPE. We encourage them to go to our website, which is www.dcrcc.org. Well, there it is. 48 years supporting women in Washington, D.C., the first rape crisis center in the entire United States. Indira Hennard, thank you for coming on. Thank you on. so much for having me. All right. Thank you. So this has been another way that we bring information to you through Impact Moment. For DCTV, I'm Alvin Jones.